this morning is wonderful, isn't it? I love it. Uh, we just want to welcome everybody this morning. Uh, just truly appreciate everyone that comes to church and we worship the Lord. And sit back and enjoy and just relax and and hear the word and hear God speak to us in a way that only He can. Only He can. Uh, just glad to, to see Connie this morning. And um, I'm glad to be here. Yes. Glad to see Carrie. And we got any visitors this yeah, morning? Yeah, Ronald is back here in front of the door. Ronald? Mm -hmm. Hi. Welcome. Glad to yeah, you got your little fuzzy hand on it. You got your little fuzzy hand on it. Yeah, I'm looking for a fuzzy thing. Yeah. Let's walk them around this morning. Yes. Don't you walk? There's a walk over there. Friday, it's the Friday, uh, 16th, it's the Friday after 
The uh, person that prepared it made a mistake. He sure does. He sure does. He sure does. He sure Okay, so the first uh, night of fish fry is February 16th. We need volunteers, anything from folding napkins to putting silverware in the napkins to making the drink to serving to serving water, coffee, um, <coughs> lemonade. Just we need people to come and help and work and with a smile on your face. And it's just a lot of lot of things go into making this fish fry uh, success. Okay. Let me yes. Come on back here. One of the things that we as a congregation need to keep at the absolute forefront. Yes, this is a fundraiser. And frankly, uh, it's needed for us to meet the budget. But let's understand that we're not doing this to raise money. We are doing this so that we can make contact with the people in our community and share the love of Christ with them. And see, what, when you win people, you have to touch them. Jesus said when he gave us the uh, Great Commission that, that you are to go and make disciples. And this is our way of touching people. And we have, over the course of the years, uh, are there are some of you sitting here were, one, were brought to the church because of the fish fry. So... Uh, let, when we pray for fish fry, yes, we want the Lord to bless us, but what we want to pray for is, Lord, help us to be so full of your spirit that the love of Jesus Christ just permeates this place. And when the people walk in, they say, wow, we love this place. And we've got to keep that in mind. Otherwise, all we're doing is just being a restaurant. And uh, people can go down to Granny's for that. Not nearly as good a fish, but. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Birthdays. Anybody have a birthday? My mom does. Your mama does. She does. And she's watching. She's watching. Birthday, Judy. Violet. Or Zion does. Zion has a birthday. It's Narita. On last Sunday, Narita. And we canceled church for her birthday last Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Okay, also, Grandpa, look at, look at the. Uh, oh. the yeah, you gotta do that. I'm a new Grandpa. And what you gotta know about this. They were going. They had. They were going to have the baby at home. Have the midwife. Midwife got stuck in a snowbank, oh, and Taryn ended up delivering the baby herself. Oh my! Ooh. Honest to God, that uh, John John put it this way. Uh, no, uh, nobody's here but Desmond is. <laughs> and but mom and baby are doing fine and. Our family is seriously considering nominating Taryn for Woman of the Year. <laughs> That's great. Let's sing Happy Birthday. Happy, Happy Birthday. birthday.
others in the area that are needing food, help them, and even if it's not in this area, just help the ones around the world, really. We need that. And I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Bless this food. Bless this money. <laughs>
faithfulness. <clears throat>
I don't know how many people how many people know where Racy is, but it's out on 57 as you go west. It's Renee's church. They got bad news two weekends ago. Pastor's wife has cancer. Yes. Her name is Cheryl. Mm -hmm. And uh, Racy is really upset about this. Uh, Renee was crying when she told me. Um, Pastor John, that's another John. Yeah, Pastor, Pastor John James and his wife is Cheryl James. Yes, Pastor John uh, helps Renee with Joshua as far as getting back forth to school. So she doesn't know how that really works out because now he has to pay attention to his wife. She may end up in a wheelchair. Uh, she's going to get chemo every day, but it's been metastasized. And uh, they're asking for prayer for the church, for Pastor John, for Cheryl. And uh, it's, it's really a concern because uh, the Pastor John has been the pastor over there for quite a few years. And uh, it's a good church. I've been there, and he preaches the gospel. It's a good church. A sheriff plays the piano for the servant. So, uh, the diagnosis, when you hear cancer, you immediately think of the worst, of course. So pray for Cheryl. Pray for Pastor John as he attends to her needs. They have two sons, and the sons are going to be helping. I had two praises also. Renee can talk. <laughs> Renee is better. Uh, she thanks everybody for their prayers. And I have a request for prayer for myself. I fell this past week. I fell against my piano and I knew I was going down, but I couldn't stop myself. But it wasn't her. The dog was looking my face. I was screaming for Jeremy. <laughs> and he got me up, but I'm sore all over. But I didn't get hurt. But my house is an obstacle course because I have dog toys. I have my tubing, my oxygen tubing, and I have shoes. And I have to walk very carefully where I go. So um, it's easy to fall. God's watching out for you, Janet. Yes. God's watching out for you. Anybody so, else? Yes, Amanda. Um, Jim has a good friend that um, with the whole family, and the gentleman has been ill. His name is Larry, and he fell on Saturday, and nobody was there, and he ended up bleeding out and dying. So please pray for that family. Anybody else? Yes, Lisa. I have a praise. <clears throat> in another couple weeks, I'm going to get new hearing aids, and my insurance is going to pay for it all. Amen. Good. That's good. That's good here. Jane up here. Cleaning out our driveways. 
and her friend for sending out that delicious uh, meal. Oh, that was very good. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Most of you are wondering about my mother. Um, it's, it's a long story. Uh, let me just summarize. Mom was moved from the hospital to a nursing home uh, a week ago today on Sunday. We were never notified. And that's a story in itself. But Mom was moved to the nursing home. We learned later that the recommendation was that, that she was moved to the nursing home for respite or for um, uh, therapy and they recommended that she be put on hospice. We were, uh, we worked and got her um, lift chair there in the room for her. And the truth is mom was rather depressed. It was a good thing I was home last weekend. It was, it was really, some things happened because I was home. Um, but uh, mom's real issue is she wants to die at home. We got her recliner there and she was able to sleep in that and rest better. And the doctor said, well, Yvonne, um, if you get strong <coughs> enough, uh, you can go home in about a week. Well, that just turned mom right around. She's been phenomenal this week. The head nurse told her, Yvonne, we'll know when you can go home, when you start crocheting. At which point she asked my sister for her crochet stuff. <laughs> and as far as I know, Mom is sitting in her <clears throat> recliner crocheting. She's happy. She was laughing. Uh, just a big turnaround. Now, uh, again, her lab's work is still crummy. Uh, you know, there are things going on. We don't know what the future holds. Uh, it's very uh, unpredictable right now. And you may find me having to leave suddenly or whatever. I mean, that, that's just there. But we, I, you don't know how much my mother and my family appreciate your care and concern and your, uh, your prayers. What you folks don't know is what my mother thinks of this church. She thinks that it's a little bit of heaven. And that's and she and she she loves the way we sing here. Uh, she likes the way we love, but most of all, she likes the way you treat me. And so you know, for mommy, that just solves everything. <laughs> but I do want to personally thank you for your prayers, especially with the travel. You know, last weekend it wasn't good, but God did indeed take care of me, and we're very very thankful. So thank you so much for what you're doing, and uh, we'll do our best to keep you abreast with how things are going. <coughs>
Some of our families have had just some very rough times here of late. And you've walked with us and talked with us and strengthened us when we didn't feel we could go on. Father, we thank you for bringing us back again. Lord, we're going to thank you for not letting us worship together last week and thanking you for uh, letting us know just how precious this time is and, Father, for even being with us individually. Lord, you've heard our request. You know each and every one. Lord, we're just going to bring them in a bundle this morning and ask that you would uh, be with each one. Father, you know the unspoken request. There are just some things that we can't talk about in public. And Father, won't you please, won't you please work in a special way uh, and be with these requests. Be with those who are chronically ill. Give them grace. Be with those who are terminally ill. Father, give them hope and uh, strength and grace that they may die well. Father, then too, we ask for the general sickness. Lord, you see how COVID has kind of made a resurgence. And we're asking that you heal us, put an edge of protection around us. Be with our nation. Father, be with our president, our governor, our legislators, our uh, judges, our uh, civil servants, all of them, Father. Lord, right now, <coughs> We've kind of lost confidence in our leaders, and we need you to work in such a way that you can uh, restore confidence. Uh, this is an election year, and Father, we're asking that your will would be done here. Father, there's, we, we've known in the past that people have tried to manipulate the elections. Father. Don't let it happen. If you have to, take them down. Don't let these, let these elections be fair and free. Uh, Father, be with our community here. We thank you for how you helped us dig out from the snowstorm and to get around and, and to, uh, uh, we, we just appreciate it. But Father, as we come before you then too, we ask that we would be a community that honors you. Uh, be with our local leaders. We pray especially for Sheriff uh, Fetterspiel. And then, Father, we ask that you be with us as a congregation. We love you, Lord. We want to be a lighthouse in this community. And we're asking that you would help us to live our lives in such a way that men and women, boys and girls, are drawn to you. We well, thank you for it. For we've asked it in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. My weekly proverb says, James, in chapter 5, verse 9, says, Don't grumble about each other, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. For look, the judge is standing at the door. Mm. Just for kids, our special music and our sermon. God bless. Well, absent boys and girls, I'm not happy this morning. My daughter, my granddaughter, plays basketball. And the game was scheduled for 10.15 this morning. I'm angry. I really am angry. But I know some things. Most people don't attend church anymore. You know, to them it's really not important. And they wonder why our society is falling apart. They miss the point that God is the thing that holds us together. Now having said that, I want to talk to you boys and girls about prayer this morning. Uh, Jesus was doing some teaching on prayer, and he said, uh, ask, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you'll find. Search, and you'll, you'll find it. Because everyone that asks receives, and 
everyone that seeks finds, and to him that knocketh the door will be opened. But here's the point. When I was a boy, my mother taught me, John, be careful how you pray, because God's going to give it to you. Now, the lesson was around primarily, don't pray for patience. Has anybody ever made that mistake? <laughs> if you pray for patience, you're going to be tried. Well, anyhow, but that lesson stuck with me. And as I was, uh, as I matured, and uh, frankly was through college, and God had put a call in my life to preach, uh, we had a, a request to go to Scottsburg, Indiana to lead the youth group down there. And it was with Lucy's former pastor. We were friends. Uh, but I couldn't pray, God, send me to Scottsburg. Uh, the reason for that was uh, Brother Yoder had enough problems, and he didn't need a youth faith leader who was out of place. I was praying about this at lunchtime. Uh, where I worked, we, uh, we were able to go out. And as I was talking about, Lord, you know, I kind of like to go there, but, and the Lord brought this scripture to me. Which of you fathers, if your son asked fish, will you give him a stone? Uh, or if he asked for bread, will you give him a serpent? Now, John, I promise you that I will only give you good things when you pray. And from that point on, I began to pray, God, send us to Scottsburg. And it wasn't very long. I think by the end of that summer, I found a job down there, and we were in ministry in Scottsburg, Indiana. So, brothers and sisters, ask and seek and knock because you get what you ask for. You find what you seek and the doors of opportunities will be open if you knock. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Well, I'm out of practice. I forgot to put story hat on. <laughs> That is a 
what I asked you or about your bad temper. You've really got a problem there, you know. And then there's the way that you spend your money all on yourself. And what about the kind of books you read? Stop picking on me. I'm just as good as some of the rest of those people at that church. Excuse me? I thought you were praying for my will to be done. If that is to happen, it will have to start with the ones who are praying for, like you, for example. Uh, all right. I guess I do have some hang-ups, now that you mentioned it. I could probably name some others. So could I. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't thought about it very much until now, but I would really like to cut out some of those things. I would like to, you know, be really free. Good. Now we're getting somewhere. We'll work together, you and I. Some victories can truly be won. I'm proud of you. Look, Lord, I need to finish up here. This is taking a lot longer than it usually does. Give us this day our daily bread. You need to cut out the bread. You're, you're overweight as it is. Hey, wait a minute. What is this? Criticize me, babe? Here I was, doing my religious duty, and all of a sudden, you break in and remind me of all my hang-ups. Praying is a dangerous thing. You can wind up changed. You know, that's what I'm trying to get across to you. You called me, and here I am. It's too late to stop now. Keep praying. I'm interested in the next part of your prayer. Well, go on. I'm scared, too. <laughs> scared of what? I know what you'll say. Try me and see. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. What about Anne? See? I told you. I knew it. I knew you would bring her up. Why, Lord? She told lies about me, spread stories about my family. She never paid back the debt she owes me. I've sworn to get even with her. But your prayer. What about your prayer? Well, I didn't mean it. Well, at least you're admitting it. But it's not much fun carrying the load of bitterness around inside, is it? No, but I feel better as soon as I get in. <coughs> Boy, I have got some plans for that neighbor. She wish she'd never moved into this neighborhood. You won't feel any better. You'll feel worse. Revenge isn't sweet. Think of how unhappy you really are, or already are, but I can change all that. You can? How are you going to do that? Forgive Anne, then I'll forgive you. Then the hate and sin will be Anne's problem and not yours. You will have settled your heart. Well, oh, you're right. You always are. And more than I want to revenge Anne, I want to be right with you, Lord. All right. All right, I forgive her. Help her to find the right road in life, Lord. She's bound to be awfully miserable, now that I think about it. Anybody who goes around doing the things she does to others has to be out of it. Some way, somehow, show her the right way. There now. Wonderful. How do you feel? Oh, not bad. Not bad at all. In fact, I feel pretty great, you know. I don't think I'll have to go to bed uptight tonight for the first time since I can remember. Maybe I won't be so tired from now on because I'm not getting enough rest. You're not through with your prayer. Go on. Well, all right. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Good, good. I'll do that. Just don't put yourself in a place where you can be tempted. What do you mean by that? Don't turn on the TV when you know the laundry needs to be done and the house needs to be picked up. Also, about the time you spend coughing with your friends, if you can't influence the conversation to positive things, perhaps you see 
you should rethink the value of those friendships. Another thing, your neighbors and friends shouldn't be your standard for keeping up. And please don't use me for an escape hatch. I don't understand the last part. Sure you do. You've done it a lot of times. You get caught in a bad situation, you get into trouble, and then you come t running to me. Lord, help me out of this mess, and I promise you'll never do it again. You remember some of those bargains you tried to make with me. Yes, and I'm ashamed, Lord, I really am. Which bargains are you remembering? Well, there was the night that the Lord and I were home alone. The wind was blowing so hard I thought the roof would go any minute and tornado warnings were out. I remember praying, oh God, if you spare us, I'll never skip my devotions again. Did you? I'm sorry, Lord, I really am. Up until now, I thought if I just prayed the Lord's Prayer every day, then I could do what I liked. I didn't expect anything to happen, like it did. Go ahead and finish your prayer. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Do you know what would bring me glory? What would really make me happy? No, but I'd like to know. I want you, I want to please you. I can see what a mess I've made of my life, and I can see how great it would be to really be one of your followers. You just answered the question. I did? Yes, the thing that would bring me glory is to have people like you truly love me. And I see this, see that happening between us. Now that some of these things, some of these old sins are exposed and out of the way, well, there is no telling what we can do together. Lord, let's see what we can make of me, okay? Amen. Let's all say the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive our trespasses against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. second helping ministry and uh, with the food banks and God has expanded our influence um, over most of mid-Michigan. Blair, how many square miles are we affecting right now? I've forgotten that number. It's over 6,000. Over 6,000 square miles we have been given an influence through this ministry. Wow, that's quite an honor for God, for God, isn't it? Uh, the second thing is, with the fish fry, uh, we have a lower cost uh, because of some of the uh, 
changing some suppliers and, and some of our uh, regular suppliers uh, have lowered their cost. And so um, we're, we're looking for opportunities to serve the people of this community and maybe get a, a, a financial blessing too. Isn't that wonderful? Huh? God has uh, uh, God is at work in some special ways. Oh, we have some bell tower blessings. Um, we now have a contractor who has agreed to repair the bell tower for us, and, which is good, but I got better news. If you remember during the business meeting, we made the uh, point that probably one of the more expensive items in the repair was the rental of a boom uh, lift. Uh, you, know what, you know what they talk about, they got to get out of the bucket and whatever. Well, I have a friend who has one. And I talk to that friend, and he is going to loan it to the church for free. Oh, oh, oh. That is right. uh, when, I, when I contacted the contractor, he said, that's a great blessing from, uh, from that person. It's very good of them to do that. So uh, we've got that. And uh, like it or not, some, we're going to have some great opportunities and we're going to have some fresh ideas and some new growth under new leadership. Pastor John, we, you're going to retire. Yes, I am. Do you want to retire? Not really. I love you. I love what I'm doing. But I know what the Lord has said to me. And do you know that when the Lord changes leadership, He is trying to bless the people with new ideas, maybe some new ways of doing things. I don't know <coughs> what all that means, but I can tell you that when we get new leadership in here, uh, oh, uh, it's kind of like this. <coughs> You're not going to quit loving me. And I'm not going to quit loving you. Right? right? And when I walk through the door, you know, oh, Pastor John is here. And we're going to have a big hug and maybe even a huge group hug or whatever. But uh, you will give the love and the support to that person that God calls to fill this pulpit and to lead us into some new heights, okay? All right, so we've got some tremendous opportunities. Well, I want to look at a scripture where God speaks about the future to his people, okay? This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you seek me with your, all your heart. I will be found of you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and the places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to this place from which I carried you in exile. Now, uh, <coughs> sermons that pull this text tend to focus on verse 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. And we're going to talk about that. But um, this context, the context, the reason why I pulled the whole context, shows that we, uh, me and thee, are living in similar circumstances and are concerned about what God may do. I've had conversations with many of you. And there's some real concerns. And so, let's pick this up and put it in the setting that Jeremiah had. The setting is this. It's found in 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 36, verses 15 through 21. The Lord, the God of their ancestors, sent words to them, 
Now he's speaking to the children of Israel, uh, the people who were living in Judah and Jerusalem. And he says, the Lord, the God of their ancestors, sent word to them through his messengers or prophets again and again because he had pity on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked God's messengers, despised his word, and scoffed at his prophets until the wrath of the Lord was around, aroused against his people and there was no remedy. He brought up against them the king of, Babylon, of the Babylonians who killed their young men with the sword in the sanctuary and did not spare young men or young women, the elderly or the infirm. God gave them all into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. He carried to Babylon all the articles from the temple of God, both large and small. Uh, the treasures of the Lord's temple and the treasures of the kings and his officials. They set fire to God's temple and broke down the wall of Jerusalem. They burned all the palaces and destroyed everything of value there. He carried them, uh, he carried into ba exile to Babylon the remnant who escaped from the sword. And they became servants to him and his successors until the kingdom of Persia came to power. The land enjoyed its Sabbath of rest. All the time uh, uh, desola of desolation it rested until the 70 years were completed in fulfillment of the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Hmm. Not good, right? We understand what's going on here. The people, uh, the, the government was corrupt and the religious leaders were corrupt. The land was full of violence, and people ignored the prophets and mocked them. Boy, that has a familiar ring, doesn't it? Huh? And consequently, the people were slaughtered, Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed, and the remnant, now this is important to realize, this is a small group of people, and I, jumping ahead, that remnant actually transformed and brought things to, in, into play. We don't have time to talk about those. But the remnant came to, were carried to Babylon, and they were hopeless. Listen to this song. By the rivers of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. There on the poplars we hung our harps, and, uh, for there our captors asked us for songs. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a foreign land? Hopeless. Now it was to this situation that God spoke to Jeremiah and sent the scripture that is our text today. Okay? All right. Let's talk about it. Next, please. In our country, the question is being raised, has America gone too far so that there's no remedy? I know those among us are saying, is America gone? Okay. Well, I remember, this sounds awfully familiar, but, but something that we need to realize, this is not the first time that America violated its covenant with God. Okay? During the early 1700s, uh, the people uh, had walked away from God. Um, the, the Presbyterian and Congregational people that had brought the Mayflower over and had settled those things and were so religious and thanksgiving and whatever. Well, generations had come and they had become very worldly. Uh, church was at best something we do, wasn't doing there. Fully one third of the uh, people in the uh, colonies, those 13 colonies, were living 
unmarried. It was a rowdy time. And it was into that that God sent the first great awakening. Uh, men such as George Whitfield and Jonathan Edwards, to those of you who are familiar with American church history, those are giants in, in, in the church history of America. And that first great awakening, those men called America back to God, back to its roots, and their, their uh, uh, next, uh, back, I'm sorry, and their teachings and that great awakening proved to be the foundation of the things that we call the American dream. It was the foundations for the Declaration and the Constitution of the United States and its, its uh, oh, a covenant between us and God. Liberty, equality, freedom, equal justice under the law, all of those things that made America great, those were the foundations during that revival. Well, revolution came, uh, and then in the early 1800s, America began to push west. And as she pushed west, the, in the Midwest, uh, back please, in the Midwest, this area where we land, where we are mostly called the Northwest Territories, uh, they became very lawless. And in the East, again, we moved away from, uh, from God, church, and whatever. And in that time, God brought what is now called the Second Great Awakening. And there, there were men. There was the Methodist revival here in this area. We've heard the stories of the camp meetings and of the circuit riders and how that they brought into this area revival and these rowdy, uh, lawless people became staunch Christians. And we today, when was this building built? 1800s. 1888. Wow, how about that? Okay. And then in, in the Methodist revival was there. And then Charles Finney led one in the East. Uh, Charles Finney actually was the first uh, president of Oberlin College at Oberlin, Ohio. But he was, a, he was a, first was a lawyer and God called him. He became an evangelist. The revivals where he went absolutely transformed uh, cities. The city, he had a, an, a, an evangelistic campaign in the city of Rochester. And what happened there in the city of Rochester? Every bar closed. Every theater closed. Churches grew. God transformed it through the Second Great Awakening. Wow. Time passes and we come to the Civil War. And the Civil War divided our nation terribly. Brother against brother, father against son, families <coughs> against families, communities against communities. And our nation, as Abraham Lincoln said, now we are engaged in a great civil war to see their four, four score and seven years ago, our forefathers founded upon this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the principle that all men are created equal. We are now engaged in a great civil war to see if that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can stand. And it did. And after the civil war, this nation is so divided. We had in the cities the layman's prayer revival. Started with a church that just said to the businessman, hey, at lunchtime, why don't you just come and pray? And all of a sudden it started small, but it began and more churches had to open and 
people began to pray and spread across the cities. And God brought revival. It was at this time, in the 1800s, the holiness revival hit. Do you? In fact, what we have here, those of us who are Church of God, Wesleyan Methodist, Free Methodist, uh, EUB, all of those had their start during this holiness revival and the idea of a second definite work of grace. Men such as D.S. Warner, Billy Sunday, and Buddy Robinson preached and reunited this nation under God and turned us back to God. Having said that, today we are living in the middle of a great apostasy. We've come to the point that schools, coaches, band directors don't even have to honor the Sabbath. Talk about apostasy. How far have we fallen? Violence fills our land. Our government is absolutely corrupt. And I don't care what sphere of government you're talking about. I don't care if you're talking federal government, state government, local government, school boards, whatever. They're corrupt. Kathleen, didn't I say something about that happening to Israel? We're living in time. Government's corrupt. <clears throat> what concerns me more than anything else is many churches have compromised. The Bible is no longer considered the infallible Word of God. We teach things that are not there. And I guess what the big thing I see is God has a remnant who feel like they're exiled in their own country. I believe most of us feel like we're part of that. I've heard too many people say, this is not the America I was, I was raised in. I can tell you I have heard more than one veteran say, this is not the America I fought for. Mm. Well, and it's to us talking down through the centuries those who are finding ourselves in a situation just like Israel, Jeremiah's words echo clear through the century saying, I know the plans I have for you. And God is speaking to us today and saying, have faith. I know the plans. And when we start talking about that, he said, I want us to take a look at some of those other situations there. Then you will call on me and come and pray with me and I'll listen to you. You will seek me and find me. And when you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will bring back your captivity. Do you think that America has gone too far? That I don't know. But I do know that we have a history behind us in America and what God has done that God brings revival in times just like this. Are you hopeless? No. Now I don't know what God's plans are. One of the things as I have been reading through the prophets that I've come to realize is that what happened 
God slaughtered the people that mocked his prophets and wouldn't listen. They were slaughtered. But the remnant were faithful. Do you think that's going to happen in America? I pray not. I pray not. But that's God's problem. What God has told us is, I know my plans for you, little remnant. I know. Their plans for blessing and prosperity. That's what he's saying to us. And so, God says this. I want you to understand, God says when we pray, he'll hear us. Amen. Hey, Pastor John, sometimes my prayers seem like they're hidden on a brass ceiling. God says, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, when we seek him with all our hearts, we're going to find him. It's a promise. It's a promise. We either believe it or we don't. And I can tell you, in my heart of hearts, I really believe this. You say, you're crazy. Leave me alone. I'm happy. <laughs> and he's going to bring us back from exile. Whoa. There's hope, folks. So, let's land. What does the future hold? <coughs> I admit, evil seems unchecked, right? It does. But uh, God's still on the throne. Amen. Furthermore, we see sparks of revival. I think of the Asbury revival. Uh, down at the Asbury College, affected thousands. And uh, uh, it even made the national news. God knows the atheistic national news doesn't like to report on things like revivals and outbreaks of Christianity. But not only Asbury, but there have been outbreaks in pockets throughout the, throughout the nation. And we're seeing sparks of revival. Satan doesn't want us to know that. He doesn't want us to have hope. He wants us to think that God's abandoned us and he's a liar. Yes, he is. We see sparks of revival. Now, God, I, I just have to be honest with you. God has not revealed to me His plans for America or our church. Okay? Now, I can tell you, you can go on YouTube and uh, you'll find lots of people that know exactly what God's going to do to America. Um, fine, if it happens their way, they, they are true prophets. If it doesn't, they weren't. I, I, just, I just can't say that. But I will tell you, what God has had to say to me, to tell you, is that He has plans for our good. Amen. That's His plans for yes. us. Yes. Now having said that, those plans are going to work themselves out in the midst of trials and problems. Oh, Pastor John, well, Sister Cucumber, that's kind of the way God works. Okay. It's going to work it out. It's going to take grace. It's going to take faith. But the trials and the problems are going to work for our good. And so, one thing, this has been one of my favorite statements. Uh, John Adams said, every problem is an opportunity in disguise. You say you're great. Well, I work, when I worked for Cummins Engine Company, uh, it was our mantra that we didn't have problems, we only had opportunities. Oh, by that company, oh, by, that, by that same token, that company was run by a bunch of deep Christians. A Fortune 500 company run by Christians? Yep. And I loved it there. Uh, but our task in this time is to pray and to seek God with all our heart. That's what we're supposed to do. Uh, who knows? Revival might start right here on our mission field. Someday they'll write, history to, historians may write, yeah, there was this little church in a little dinky town, village called Oakley, but 
They prayed and they sought God and they did their best to serve Him and honor Him and, uh, and live the life. And, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, there was a revival started there that spread over 6,000 square miles of Michigan. So I land with 2024 promises to be a year of opportunities. Comes with us, folks, and we need to look forward to see what God is going to do. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father, I've done my best to bring the message to this dear people that you laid on my heart. The Father, we're not blind. We don't know what you have in mind altogether. But you promised that you would listen if we would pray. And so, Father, we pray here in our area. Will you break this uh, atheism and this indifference to you and Father, this dishonoring of you. Father, please, please, have mercy on us. Lord, you've pulled America back from the brink time and time again in the past. And we're asking that you would bring great honor to your name by turning America around again. Father, help us to seek you with all our heart. Lord, the, there are so many things. You know how I have to struggle with just so many things to do and so many things that need to get done. Oh, God. Help us to seek you first. Lord, we'll thank you for it all. For we've asked it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us stand. Sing that little song, I am blessed. We're blessed. Amen.